I'm starting work on this Orky Jet, and you can see I've already been working on it, and uh, got it assembled, got some sub-assemblies. I added in a few little extra parts, some extra plates here and there that are got their rivets on. You can see one there, one there, one over here, some extra wires, some broken because orcs, and um, just just uh, just different different things on it like that. Now I primed it in Steinol Res Red Brown Primer. The reason I'm using the red brown is because it's going to be yellow. I'll talk more of that in a minute. It's going to be yellow, and if I primed it in black, uh, you put yellow over black, often you get green, and I, I don't want to do that. And it's also going to be very, very rusty and beat up and worn, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, that's that's why I primed it in this brown, but you know how it is with priming. You can do it based on what's going to go over it, or you can do whatever you want. So whatever whatever you're comfortable with. Now the kit comes in several boxes. It has different box art on the front. But what I would recommend that you do, because this is the Orcs DACA Jet, but what I recommend you do is flip the box over and make sure that it has all the parts to build all the versions, which this one does. And you've basically got the DACA jet, which is more of a fighter. You've got the Blitz Obama, which is more of a heavier bomber. You've got the Wazbom Blasta jet, which I'm not even sure what all of that. No, wait, that's the Wazbom Blasta jet. And uh, I think. And then uh, you've got this Burna bomber. So everyone has their own unique things, and you can build all of these versions out of this box. Now, I'm building something that's more like the uh, Blitzer Bomber, but I've added some additional parts from some of the other versions, so it's a little bit of a of a little bit of a hybrid. Um, but I have it on a good recommendation from a friend of mine who knows his Warhammer stuff. That pretty much when it comes to orcs, she just do whatever you want. I think the term he used was the rule of cool applies. So I'm hoping it'll look pretty cool, but I'm going to go with this more or less this model here, but I want to go for a yellow look like that. I know, I know red goes faster, but, um, I just dig the, the, the color, the, the yellow color for that. So, and I, and I thought was doing a lot of rust. Yellow would help the rust show up. Uh, really well, much better than red wood. Not red wood like the tree, but red. Well, you get it. <coughs> now, my plan for this video series is that each video will more or less focus on a different um, technique, application method, something like that. Um, at the end, I'll end up with the Orky Jet painted, uh, but there may be some just basic you know, painting stuff that I don't necessarily show or that I show as a Patreon video for all you people who are on Patreon. Thank you. Um, but uh, I'm really going to be trying to focus on techniques because I just thought, one, the surface area of the model just gives a lot of demonstration space. And two, there's a lot of things that can be thrown at this model. So I thought it would be really cool. This first video is going to focus on rust. Now, if you're thinking... But John, previously you have already done a very fine and wonderful video on rust. Did you know that's how you speak? Yeah, that's how you speak. Anyway, yes, I have done a video on doing rust on models. And maybe if I remember, there's going to be a link popping up here right about now. But this is going to focus on more application technique and and more different, more scenarios of application technique than that video did. And I'm also going to focus this one on using acrylics to apply the rust. Now, this is the portion of the video where I'm going to talk about products in theory. So I'm going to go on for a little while about it because I think it's important stuff for me. Um, so I want to share it with you. If you don't like products in theory and all that blah, 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 um, 
then I'll, if I remember, I'll put a timestamp in when I actually start doing the stuff. So you can just hit that and just, just fast forward ahead and uh, get right to the, uh, get right to the action part of it. Yeah. Action. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, there are a load of products that I like to use acrylic products for rust. And keep in mind, a product doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to have the name rust in it to use for rust. For example, there's some great Citadel paints that produce rusty tones, things like Jacaro Orange and Scrag Brown and Tau Light Ochre. Um, uh, Rhinox Hide is a great base for it. Uh, the Mornfang Brown can be a great uh, uh, color. You want to get some bright pops of color in there, Troll Slayer Orange. So there's there's different different Citadel products that work well, paints that work well to paint on your rust tones. Additionally, for uh, other special effects, you've got Agrellin Earth, which I'll be using some of that to show you how I do that. It's a crackle paint. And then Typhus Corrosion, which is a, uh, it's a texture paint that is great for making things look really old and rusty. Another really great uh, set of paints to use is this Life Color uh, from their Diorama series. And they have uh, some rust colors, Rust Light Shadow 1 and 2, and Rust Base Color, and Rust Dark Shadow. Now, they use rust in their names, but I mean, really, when you look at it, they're just, they're just the same colors as this for the most part. So it's really about color when it comes to that same way with, um, uh, Vallejo model air makes a really nice set of model air paints, uh, for rust. And really they're just taking a lot of their, their paints that are already existing, uh, Brown RLM 61. I mean, that's, that's just, a paint, yellow ochre. They have some that are orange rust, rust, and light rust, but again, they're just they're just paints. And then Vallejo also makes some model washes with a dark rust, a rust, and a light wash. And then you could use Citadel washes. Agrax Earthshade is a great one uh, to go over this. Drukey Eye Violet works really well uh, when you're working with rust tones. So there's a lot of a lot of variety and obviously this is not exhaustive anything that's orangeyish and yellowish and brownish is going to work for your rust now another thing i like to look at is pictures of rust because knowing how rust looks um, and really examining that in detail helps me in my model building now yeah we all know what rust looks like i mean you know if you've you've, you've been anywhere at any time in you know anything you've seen it but how often do we actually stop and look at a rusty thing to see, okay, how does that look? So I think it's important to go to the Googles and uh, do some image searches. Now here's a search that I did for rusty exhaust pipes. I just did a Google image search and you can see the one that I've focused on. Y you can see the effects of rust. You see how it's, it's made the metal corrode and the metal has, I mean, it's just, it's just disappeared. There's, there's hard edges. There's look at the variety of colors, the browns, but notice there's some, there's some bits of white, some dusty looking things in there. And also notice that on the outer section of the, the really rusty part, it's still very metallic looking. Notice the, the look of it. That's caused not only by the dust underneath the car and other things like that, but it's caused by heat. So you're dealing with, with rust, you're dealing with not only oxidization, but you're dealing with heat. So you have to account for heat effects when, uh, when you're really trying to get your rust and your rusty parts looking good. There's rust and then there's parts that are on their way to rusting. Now here I did a Google search for rusty metal plates and I found this one and you can see, uh, you know, the, the one that I've focused on, you'll notice over to the left, there's still some, I don't know if these are ultramarines cause that looks like ultramarine blue, but, oh wait, I forgot. One time I did a ultramarine vehicle and I was told that type of armor would not rust. 
it's very specialized and is composite and would not rust. And I told him, I said, well, in this place where this vehicle was in the 41st century, it had an atmosphere that made composites rust. And he goes, I don't, I'm not familiar with that place. It, it was blew his mind. Anyway, <laughs> um, you can see that, what was I doing? Oh yeah, back to the variety of colors. You can see the variety of colors, everything from that towel light ochre look that, you know, kind of desaturated yellow to oranges, to browns, to the background color coming through. And uh, even just some areas that look like where the, the underlying metal may even be showing. And also notice the visceral texture. Now, that can be hard to reproduce in scale in terms of, you know, you can overdo it. But notice that this thing looks like if you ran your hand along, and you know this if you've ever touched rust, it's very rarely smooth. Um, early on in the oxidization process, it may be kind of smooth, but later on, it's going to get more and more texture to it. So on this model, I'm going to try and simulate that. Now, of course, another thing is to look at rust from a distance. Um, in the, the previous two, we were looking at rust kind of up close. But I think it's important to look and see how does a rusty object look from a distance. Now, I picked tractors because it was the first thing that came to mind, but you could, you know, search for rusty tanks, rusty tractors, rusty vehicles, whatever, rusty airplanes. And it's going to give you some ideas for how does rust look at a distance. Like this, this video or this image that I've uh, got pulled up as the larger one here. Notice that the the uh, exhaust is kind of sticking up there to the top right of it. Notice that there's some area on that that's still that that's still metallic looking. It's not rusted. Uh, then there's other places on it that are just very completely rusted. Look at all of the texture. Like if you look at the tire that's to the lower left and then just a little bit to the right of that, there's kind of a a horizontal cylinder or a vertical cylinder. Uh, along there. Notice the texture, the very visible visceral texture that's on there, the dark rust color against the lighter rust color. But just notice how it looks, how it affects the other parts around it, and, uh, and how, you know, quite often rain and things like that will make rust stains flow and it will move around and it will grow and it will bloom and it will do all sorts of colors. So there's different ages of rust. So looking at vehicles at a distance is going to also give us some clues about how we can make rust work for us on our models. Now my plan for painting the model is I'm actually basing this in, and I wish I had saved the link, but I listened to a video somewhere on YouTube and it was, I mean, it was like an hour and a half, two hours long. But it was an orc lore story about this giant orc ship that crashed onto a planet. And it, they began building their society around this and trying to build a, a ship to take them off the planet. And, you know, it just, it just went into the lore of the orcs really deeply. And it was really kind of fascinating. And one of the things that, that, that stuck out was that okay, when the orcs are building these things, because you get the idea, it's, it's not like they have necessarily a factory that produces everything looking the same, but rather it's, okay, it's all one-off stuff. It's from whatever parts we can find. It's very haphazard. And then you may have one group that works on it one day and another group works on it another day and two groups argue over it, and somebody gets their face smashed into it. And so it's a constant you know, back and forth and back and forth until finally it's done and it works and it may work for a little while and then it blows up and then they build, you know, everybody laughs and they build another one. So I wanted to build this one and paint this one and weather this one with that in mind. I don't want it to look all solid one color. I don't want it to look overly processed. I want to make it look like what if there really were orcs and what if they really did build this with all of the challenges and weirdness that, that comes with orkiness, you know, what would it look like? Uh, and, and, uh, 
and try and replicate that. Now, is it is it perfectly adhering to lore? I don't know. Is it going to be fun? That's what I'm hoping. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to decide what's going to be heavily rusted and what's going to be just a little bit rusted. And maybe there's going to be a few parts that are kind of new looking, maybe not as rusted. Not that 100% of everything on here is going to be rusted, but most of it is going to be rusted. Now, if you skipped ahead past the theory part, welcome to the future. And if you just kept watching, hey. <laughs> now, to start off, I want to show what I think is probably the easiest um, method of applying something that looks rusty. And that's just using a sponge. Now, what I've got is I've got Citadel's Mornfang Brown scrag brown and death claw brown and you can see they're just some rusty looking colors now throughout this video don't get hung up on the brand or the specific color if you like it you know you don't have it pick it up and use it but what's really important is it's just a variety of orangey brownsy rusty things with some contrast between them that's the key contrast is the key because you want some contrast of color now I've thinned each of these down quite heavily, a little more than 50-50 with water. And all I want to do is just start stippling that on with my, uh, with my sponge here. And you can be heavy, you can be light, you can, you know, this is rust. Um, doesn't have to be beautiful. So I'm going to put down a base of this, just like this. And then I'm just going to go right in, and you notice I didn't even, I didn't even um, change the sponge. I'm just going to be swapping back and forth between them, like this. And the idea is, you just kind of build it up, switching between colors. You just want variation. That's all you're looking for. That's all I'm looking for. And if it mixes and, you know, gets some color here, some color there, that's okay. The idea is you want it to be just a general rust, almost, I don't know if the word patina is the right word, but just something that's varied. I'll let that dry and then I'll go back in and put a couple more layers over it. And over time, as I build it up, what I'll do is I'll start focusing more of one color, you know, here, 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 and then put some of the other color here, 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 here. But for just a general, general coating, just this variation that's serendipitous I guess you'd say where you know you're just kind of getting whatever you get and I think this is also really fun to do it this way because it's kind of a Forrest Gump method of doing it you never know what you're gonna get I like that all right I did some work on the upper wings and the tail planes and you can kind of see over here I started with the darker color and I did a lighter application over here I started with the lighter color the uh, death claw brown and I put that on dried it put another layer on so it really lightened it up and then I went in with the other two colors and again all are very thinned and put those on so you can see how you can get it looking a very light rust color, a very dark rust color. I did just this panel here and a little bit on just this panel here so that it looks like, you know, there's different materials, different, um, different ages, because rust really represents age. That's what rust represents. How old is something? So the idea is these parts that make up the wing here are not quite as old as this. And this is you know, made from very old metal. Uh, so th that's that's the thinking here. Now, I didn't use a lot of yellow. I've got like 
towel light ochre standing by. I didn't use a lot of that because the model is going to be painted yellow. So a lot of, if I use yellow rust tones at this point, they're probably going to get lost in the mix. Now the whole time I'm doing this, I'm thinking of what's going to come later. I don't, I mean, I enjoy doing this process. It's a lot of fun and it's easy to get caught up in it. But I'm trying to think, okay, now I'm eventually going to be painting over most of this. Um, some places with fairly opaque layers, some places with very trans semi-transparent layers, very splotchy places. Some places I may leave completely rusted with no paint on them at all. So I try to keep that in mind. And, and if you know that there's going to be an area that you're going to paint a certain color and it's going to be completely opaque, um, you may not need to rust it. But and And I also know that once I get later layers of paint on, I may go back in and add some additional rust on top of that, but um, that'll help boost those areas. Another thing to consider, if you're going to be using uh, what's often called the hairspray method, whether you're using hairspray or a, a modeling specific uh, chipping fluid, if you're going to put, you know, say a coat of hairspray on and then you're going to airbrush on um, your layer of paint and then chip it off. This application method for rust is a great way to get some really excellent results using uh, the hairspray method. Now the most important reason I'm doing it this way is so that I can squeeze a video out of it. <laughs> One other thought, if you use a dry brush uh, in place of a sponge, it gives a slightly different pattern, a slightly different look, similar results. Um, bonus points if you use the dry brush and the sponge. You just get a lot of variation in, uh, in the color. Now if you remember back to the beginning of the video, I showed a picture and uh, it showed kind of an exhaust, um, exhaust uh, uh, thingy the word slip in my mind right now and you you saw that there was still some some steely look to it it wasn't bright shiny metallic silver but it was still some of that gray that was coming through now what i've done in my palette is i've mixed up some vallejo deck tan and neutral gray now i like using this and I could have just used a gray but I like adding and it's mostly deck tan I like using the deck tan because it's it's a warmer color um, it just it to me it just looks like kind of a corroded steel look and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get dual duty out of showing this because what I want to do is I want to imagine that this panel is one that still has some of the metal that's still showing. It's not completely rusted over. For whatever reason, you can still see the underlying metal. And so I'm going to start off just by stippling that on there. Now I can do this as heavily as I want to. I can focus on one side of it and not the other. Um, I could focus on the edges and not around these vents. Um, you know, I could focus on these things alone. Wherever you think the emphasis needs to be. And all I'm doing is this is just a big old number four uh, brush, Series 99 from Rosemary & Co. And uh, I'm just, I'm not stabbing it directly down. I'm just using the side of the brush. Just kind of stipple in some of this color. So this is showing one way of doing that. I can go through and color this whole thing up and it's going to give me one look. Here you can see the finished result and it just gives it a look like something that's rusted but not completely rusted. It could be paint, it could be the underlying material. If I would have done this with say the yellow color or another color it would have looked like chipped paint and you can do both. Um, some places you may want to base something with that steely gray color and then put the rust on top of it and then put uh, the other uh, the other chipping on it. 
Another thing to keep in mind is once you do this, again, for the sake of tonal variation, you can use, say, a wash or a shade, any of those, any of those things that I, I showed, or even just thinned down paint. But like, for instance, this is some Fuegan Orange from uh, Citadel, and it's just one of their shades. And I can go in here, and I can apply this all over this one panel. And I've thinned it down just a little bit with water so that it's a little more flowy and not quite as intense a color. But I can come in and just fully paint this on. And what I'm going to end up with is something that's just a little bit different in terms of its color. That's still going to be orangey, but I could use something that's more yellow. I could use something that you get some interesting results if you use something that's a, a almost a, a, a glaze layer that's kind of purple. Because um, if you look closely at something that's really rusted, you may see some purple in there. So there are so many ways to just take that basic technique and then putting things over them and around them and end up with all sorts of variation to get your rust tones. You see how it just subtly shifts the color of that. I could put on more layers. That's two layers, very thin layers. I could put on more and just keep shifting that. So glazes are something of various types, glazes, washes, things like that, of various types are ways that you can differentiate uh, the colors. Now rust can eat away at metal and this is especially true when metal's been heated up really hot and then you know, of course, it's exposed to elements, and, and so it's getting all of those things. Heat just kind of accelerates everything that rust does. So the exhausts are a great candidate on any model, are a great candidate for not only rust, but for additional texture. Now, keep in mind, when I talk about texture, there's, there's two kinds generally. There's visual texture and visceral texture, meaning... Like if I'm painting some leather on a model, and it's a very small model, I may stipple in some different colors and things like that. And if you touch it, it's smooth. But visually, it looks like soft leather with some wrinkles and things like that in it. Whereas sometimes you want visceral texture, you know, where you you touch it and you can actually feel uh, uh, some some texture, some, some undulations on the surface. How's that for a $64 word? And... Uh, and so you're, there are places on the model, anything is a candidate for visceral texture, but the rust on the, uh, the rust and, and the way it rusts on exhausts is a particularly good candidate. Now I've got this Citadel technical paint called Typhus Corrosion. And what it is, it's a very uh, dark rust color that just has some grainy texture in it. It's a great thing to, uh, to base your exhausts in, and uh, you, can, you can get away with just putting some of this on, dry brushing with a rusty color, throwing a wash over it. You can call it a day. It's uh, some great stuff. It doesn't have to be this, though. You're just really looking for anything with texture in it. Not too much. I don't know that I would want to use some kind of mud wash or something like that, unless you just really really wanted it to look uh, beat up or if it was a very large scale i could see how on something say from machining krieger or something of a very large scale like that that you would uh, that you would want that so i'm going to paint this on here and let it dry i like i said i think i said i thinned it with some water and what that allows me to do is kind of control the texture i can let this dry see if it's enough and then if it's not, I can go back in with another layer and uh, get that on there. Another thing to consider when you're figuring out how you're going to rust it, how you're going to age it, is they tend to age more where there's more heat. So generally the heat is going to be concentrated where it's exiting from the engine or whatever it is. And then even though it's still going to be hot all down the length of the exhaust, 
it's not going to be as hot as where it first emerges. So you can really make hay by, uh, by having some really heavier texture up towards the source of the heat. Now this is still drying, but hopefully you can see that texture that's on there. It makes for a really, really cool look, especially when you put uh, some, some more rust colors over. Like I said, you can just about get away with just dry brushing this with a little bit of a rusty color and throwing a wash on it. And it's good, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> now, if you want even more texture, and I'm putting this over the, uh, the typhus corrosion deliberately because I want it to be real textured. But I'm using something from Citadel called a Grelin Earth. Now what this is, is this is a crackle paint. As my voice crackles, how appropriate. This goes on fairly thick, like a paste. And you want to put it on reasonably thick. It will thin out. It will thin out somewhat as it dries. But what's going to happen is it's going to make this great crackled texture effect. It's designed to be used on bases to look like, you know, dried up crackled earth. But when we use it for, for rust, it gives us that, that look that rusty exhausts often get when they're starting to really degrade and fall apart. The grill on my back porch is a perfect example of that. Now it's still drying. It has to take time to crackle. And even when it looks dry, it may still keep on crackling. I've sped this up with a hair dryer, but I'm going to give it several hours now to, to a dry. But you see that? You see that texture? Isn't that awesome? That's what makes this fun to paint, is that texture. That looks like something that's really degraded by rust and all of that. You can go to town painting that. The thicker you put it on, the more crackles you get. I put it on a little thicker on this one than I did on this one. And so the crackles are a little different. They're much more subtle on this one than they are on the other one. But you see, combined with that typhus corrosion, whoops, sorry about bumping the camera. Combined with that typhus corrosion, it gives a really, really cool look to it. This is, this is what I mean when it's all about having fun. This is so fun. It's like a kid playing with out in the mud in his backyard in the summer. <laughs> now to start the painting, I'm going to get these a coat of Rhinox Hide. It's a very dark reddish brown color, which is great as a rust shadow, a rust base. Now using a small dry brush, I'll just stipple on some scrag brown. Don't have to worry about getting complete coverage, but if you get complete coverage, don't worry about it either. If you want to, you can always go back and adjust with the previous color if you need to. Now I'm going to apply a Citadel shade called Drukei Violet. Yes, I'm using purple. I saw this demonstrated on Instagram somewhere back when I was still on Instagram. And um, I thought it really looked good. Now, if you don't like how it looks, or you would rather not use Drukei Violet, then Agrax Earthshade would work really well. Um, Fuig and Orange, the two of them mixed together. Sarah from Sepia. There's all sorts of things you can use. So, this is just a suggestion. I'm not the Mandalorian. This is not the way. This is just a way. But I like it. And I'm going to use a fairly bright orange. Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to get most of it off on my texture palette here. And then I'm just going to go in and just start dry brushing it lightly over all that texture. And that's just going to bring up that texture and the edges. 
things like that. Continuing to sell the rust effect. Now I'll use some towel light ochre. And I'm just going to do kind of an edge highlight. Sort of a hybrid dry brush edge highlight. To just hit the edges, the bolts, just the various features that are on the exhaust. And maybe just a light pass over some of the texture to help bring that up just a little bit. And that's what you end up with. You can always go back, add darker washes in. I'm, I may go back with some Agrax Earth Shade and just deepen some of the recesses just to make that stand out a little more. You can go back over it with the Drukei Eye Violet. You could go over it with a contrast paint. You could go over it with a very thinned paint. You could stipple on more colors. There's be, because these are textury, doing more over it and adding more texture only enhances the look, in my opinion. But I'm okay with this. In the words of the man at the end of the movie, Babe, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Well, I suppose at some point I'm going to have to draw the video to a close. But I guess the main point when it comes to applying rust is you're just trying to make metal look old. That's all you're doing. Like as you see here, I'm applying some of this scrag brown and it's very thin and I put it on and then I just stipple it around. I'm spreading the pigments all over the surface because no matter what you do with rust, it's some degree between fairly new shiny silver. This is just some silver with some Agrax Earth shade over it and now some scrag brown. But it's something in between clean metal and very old metal. That's all it is. And it's using some simple colors like these here. I mean this is Deathclaw Brown, Scrag Brown, Fire Dragon Bright, Towel Light Ochre, but really it's just various shades of oranges and desaturated yellows. That's all it is. And the rust can go on in any amount, in any place. If you want to follow some pattern of logic, then it makes sense to, you know, put some around bolts, put some around areas that are going to have water running down them, areas that are going to be exposed, areas that have been exposed to chipping, but in the end, like this whole jet, you can't just put it everywhere on the model, all over it. Because, as always, it's your model. This one is mine. You have yours. And if you get done with it and you think, well, that's a little too much, or that's a little more of an effect that I wanted. Well, you've learned from it. That's the benefit. I've built a lot of models, and I've been doing it for a lot of years. Sometimes people will ask me, you know, how do you get that effect? Ultimately, I got that effect by trying it on hundreds of models. And more than a few times, not doing quite as well as I wanted to with it. It's that way with any endeavor, of course, but certainly within our hobby. I remember when I did a video about airbrushing and talking about how it really comes down to thinning your paints, air pressure, and practice. And somebody emailed me and they said, yeah, but come on, what's, you know, what's the, the, the secret? What's the secret? And I finally said, okay, the secret is Airbrush 300 models. That's the secret. He's like, no, no, really. I'm like, no, that's it. So don't view work that you do as good or bad, but just view it as learning. This is how I learned on this model what works well or what doesn't work well. 
because it's paint and plastic, you can always paint over it. You can always add something new. You can always blend something in. You can always make changes to it. So, try Rust. If you've not tried it yet, find some fall colors. Um, doesn't have to be these brands. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be acrylic paint. You can, you can use oils, enamels, whatever. A combination of all three. But try some Rust. Start small. Build it up. And just see how it ends up and what you think of it. Observe what's happening when you apply it. Observe what happens when you thin it. What happens when you spread it around. What happens when you make corrections to it, when you push the pigments around, when you use a lot of water, whatever. Sometimes it even helps to make notes of these things. And before long, you will be completely comfortable with adding rust to your models confidently. And I think you'll find that it's an extremely fun and satisfying process. So anyway, I'm going to keep working on this and get this completely covered in rust. And then in the next episode, I'll cover it up in paint. Well, thank you so much for watching. And if you're still watching at this point, I especially thank you. Um, I hope that this has helped encourage you in ways that you can rush your model and just think about color, texture, and age. That's what you're really thinking about. And uh, just apply the products and uh, just go to town with it. Have fun with it and enjoy it. That's what this hobby is about. It's about having fun. It's about relaxing. It's about just the, the process of creativity. So I hope... I hope uh, sometime soon you get to enjoy that process and uh, get lost in it also. A uh, special thanks to those who support me on Patreon. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, you, you are a blessing to my family and I, and you, you help make what I do possible because you help fund the, the work that I do. So uh, we're thankful for that. If you would like to support the work that I do, there's a link down below to Patreon. I'd be grateful if you click that link. Uh, you'll not only be supporting the work that I do, but you'll get additional videos and other information uh, more frequently than uh, here on YouTube. So I'd be grateful for that. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.